Hello, how are you doing? I hope you're well. I'm out by Pocklington Canal and I've got a stove to test. And Pocklington Canal is a place where I often paddle and camp. But as you can see, it's still very weeded up at the moment. So paddling's out of the equation. So what I thought I'd do is I'd have a walk along here because I thought I'd check the canal out while I was at it. Set my little stove up, get it going and cook some something to eat. It's actually quite nice having a walk along here. I've only ever paddled it. It's been chopped back a lot. All this banking has been chopped back quite a bit since I was last on it. Yeah, definitely too much weed at the moment. The good thing is though, in another month or so, it's now September, mid-September, in another month or so, end of October time, that'll have all died back. The other thing this little meander gives me the opportunity to do is to check on the geocaches I've got hidden in the area. So I've already checked the one at Hag Bridge and that's all okay. But then I can check the one up at the lock up ahead, which has just come into view. You might not be able to see it just yet. But well, that's where I normally get out and camp. The canal's a bit clearer of weed at this end. But still, to get to this point, I'd have had to battle through loads. The bulrushes are starting to die back. And just up ahead there, that's the mooring where I normally disembark. Looks like those picnic benches have been moved and the big log that I had stacked up next to one that looks to have gone. And that's a shame because that was my firewood chopping log. That's the one I chopped my wood on. Look at all the berries in this tree. Loads. Gonna be glad to get this pack off. Weighs about 15, 20 kilos I'm estimating. Yeah, I've got quite a bit in there. <laughs> That's the geocache checked, all okay there. We've just noticed some irresponsible dog owner has left a bag of sh dirty bass. Right, let's get this stove out, eh? Here it is. So I have brought a bit of firewood with me. Well, this is it, the little wood burner stove. It's got legs at the bottom, just pop them out. This plate at the top, comes with some gloves, some uh, instructions in English and Chinese. That's the front door piece. I have already screwed the handle on, it did come separately. There is a wing nut here to uh, fix the chimney in place. And there's a spring, and a do flick, and I have no idea what these are for. They're not mentioned in the instructions and I couldn't find them in the imagery. Either. And there's this plate inside for where you feed the wood into. So it kind of feeds in like there. The chimney, a bit of an unusual one this one. It's kind of like a thin aluminium thing and you extend it by pulling each piece out and it gets gradually thicker as it goes. It's not a particularly tall chimney, so I'm not quite sure how this is gonna fare in my tent, to be honest. And that's it, it's very thin. It's probably about, if I stand next to it, probably between four and five foot tall. And the idea being then is you slide this wing nut down, just tighten this up so that the chimney doesn't drop. The door, I'll turn this round, it'll be easier to show you. There's a little notch here and the door has a little notch just in there. And the door basically sits on top like that. And it's got a, like a little wind baffle at the front. Yeah. Anyway, let's get some wood in it, get it fired up, and we'll see what it's like. 
got my homemade fire lighters with me. You might have seen the video for that on the channel. It's going to make this really easy today. I'm just using this kindling wood because I don't want to this to be burning for too long because it needs to cool down so that I can get it back home. <laughs> Yeah, that's starting to take now. So I think what we'll do is we'll put this plate on. Just realized I didn't quite have the door on properly before. It does actually sit on and kind of lock into place. There we go. And then you can adjust this baffle here to control the airflow through it. So I think what we'll do is we'll put this on there and start getting it warmed up. We're getting some uh, heat out of that chimney. That's heating up nicely, actually. Right, so what are we having? Well, we've got some eggs, some bread, some cheese and some pepperoni there. Hey, look at that. And then in here, I've got some sausage and potato. Look at that, got some grass on it already. Proper cooking this. Let's get that separated. So egg, cheese and potato toasties with some sausages. Yeah, filth. Wonder how this is gonna work in my uh, hot tent. I am curious. Time will tell, I guess. Coming up to that time of year where I'll be testing it. Yeah, the thing was, I just wanted uh, a slightly smaller stove than the one I normally have, just to see how it panned out. Oh, it's starting to get some sizzle on. It's always a bit reassuring. <laughs> it's a dinky little thing, isn't it? The chimney's already starting to, uh, to colour. This little controller on the front seems to work really well. You can hear the change in the flame as you uh, as you open it up. Hmm, good stuff. Oh, that's starting to look nice. Yeah. Let's see what these are like. Little taste here. Hmm, lovely. A little bit longer just to make sure the sausage is cooked. One of the things I have noticed is it's a little bit cooler here at this end of the stove than it is right at the back. So if you want more heat, if you move it there nearer the chimney, you're going to get things cooking quicker. We just obviously then have to watch for burning. But this is working quite well here. With having that baffle quite wide open, it's burnt through this wood quite quick. Yeah, that's getting nice, isn't it? What we'll do is we'll get the eggs in there just to hold all that together. Can you hear that fire going? I don't know whether the mic's picking that up. Look at that. Glorious. Got the full family here, though. Oh yeah, it's getting there, almost ready to flip. In fact, I think we'll just flip it anyway. Woohoo, look at that. So let's get some cheese on there. Bit of pepperoni filth. Bit of relish on the bread, eh? slapped on. I can certainly feel quite a lot of heat coming from this which is good. So definitely warm a tent up. Right let's get this flipped over. Oh yeah look at that. Last bit of pepperoni slap bang in the middle. Bit of cheese just separate that a little bit. Bit more bread and relish. Lovely stuff. Pop that one on there and then 
squish it together. Let's have a look see how it's doing. Oh yeah, that's toasting nicely that. Nice and even. A couple of minutes I reckon. Yeah, look at that. Hey, right, let's leave it on the other side for a few minutes. All right, let's have a look at the other side. Flip that over. Oh yeah, reckon that's done, don't you? So we'll take that off the heat. What we'll do is we'll take the door off to facilitate that burning out quicker. Don't think it's gonna take too long, to be honest. Smoldering away nicely in there. And while that burns out and cools down behind me, might as well tuck in, eh? Oh man, that looks awesome, doesn't it? Now that's what you call a sandwich. Oh man, this is so tasty. Is this sandwich worth giving the video a? I think so. If you do like what I'm doing on the channel, by all means, smash that subscribe button and uh, and the bell so that you get notifications when I upload any new stuff. That's if you're enjoying it, of course, because if you're not, no point, is there? But I'm enjoying this. So that little wood burner stove, I got it on eBay. I paid about, um, about 90 quid, I think, about 95 quid. There are various sellers selling them and some for about 130 and as I say, I paid about 95. I wouldn't have wanted to pay any more for it, to be honest. But I think it'll do what I want it to do during the winter months. I'll show you how it packs down in a minute. That's burnt down nicely in there. And you know, it might have even been hot enough to make charcoal. Right, so this is starting to cool down nicely. I've disposed of all the, the ash safely, where it can't do any harm. There's this butterfly ring to take off the, uh, the flue pipe. So that comes off there. And then what you do with the chimney, is you just kind of knock the pipes down. Come on, you little rascal. Get down, there we go. This is the danger, I think, with these, is if you get a bit of resin in the chimney, in the flue, it's going to make it stick, and I think that's what's happened here. The last bits out, the legs just fold up. And then you just slot everything inside. little canvas bag's not going to stay white for long, is it? <laughs> not bad, eh? Well, that's everything packed away. Time to go. If you've got one of these little stoves, let me know in the comments and let me know if you've got any tips or tricks for it. Anything that helps us make it function better or just any mods that you might have made. That's all for now. I'm going to walk back to the car. Thanks so much for watching. You take care of yourself. Cheerio. Where the hell did that come from?